Okay, now let's observe change in load when motor is operating at constant excitation at lagging power factor. So, effect of change in load. Now, please see. Effect of change in load at constant excitation when motor is operating at lagging power factor okay so after this we will move towards the numerical now please see change in load at constant excitation when motor is operating at unity power factor so already we have ef phasor on neglecting ra we have ef phasor is equals to v phasor minus of ia j ia excess phasor as ra is neglected so you can say sir let us suppose for a moment we are taking v as a reference so for v as a reference and if the motor is operating at unity power factor then you can say sir ia is in phase with motor okay let this to be the locus of ia okay in order to understand the power factor i am saying this to be the locus of ia now see v phasor plus of j ia excess phasor uh, for motor you have to keep in mind that load angle delta is negative so always draw downward okay so for that i am taking this to be here now please see let v as a reference then for v as a reference you can say for a unity power factor ia is in phase with v okay now please see ia is in phase with v this is your locus of ia now please see locus of i for a unity power factor you can say sir v phasor and in unity power factor it means ia phasor is in phase with v then v minus of j ia axis if this is your ia then minus ia is on this side and j ia axis is downward so you can say sir v phasor minus of j ia axis phasor will give you ef phasor at an angle delta let this to be ef phasor at an angle delta is it okay now if the gen, if the motor is operating at leading power factor at the same megawatt let us suppose this to be the locus of constant megawatt as we have discussed earlier locus of constant megawatt it means active load uh, it, it means sh a shaft con uh, load connected onto the shaft is not changing okay now please see in case if the if the motor is operating at lagging power factor then you can say the motor is under excited so let us suppose this to be ef1 is the present excitation and for that much of load that is megawatt then you can say sir this must be your jia excess phasor for this to be jia1 excess phasor this is 90 degree to the ia so this must be ia is it okay and ia is lagging by an angle say a phi 1 let it be ia1 and this will be your load angle delta 1 now in case if we increase the load that is megawatt while we are not changing the while we are not changing the uh, excitation so for constant excitation you can take this excitation uh, line as a radius and draw a arc so if we decrease the megawatt it will be go somewhere here and if we increase the megawatt then it will go somewhere here so this axis is representing the megawatt axis as megawatt is proportional to ef sine delta already we have observed that power input or power developed you can say for ra neglected is equals to 3 into vef by excess where ef and v are on per phase basis and excess is the per phase synchronous reactance into sine of delta okay now please see you can observe here that p is proportional to ef sin delta so in case if we increase 
EF sin delta, it means active power is increasing. Is it okay? And also, you can observe here that reactive power is 3 into V by Xs V minus EF cos delta. Okay. So, you can say, sir, reactive power input to the machine is proportional to V minus EF cos delta. Now, in case if we are not changing the excitation, so you can say, sir, if the excitation is not changing, it means rotor current is not changing, but we are increasing the megawatt. So, if we increase the megawatt, then you can say, sir, the machine will operate now at this particular megawatt load. Presently, the machine is, let us suppose the machine is operating at some 0.75 per unit power. And if the power is being increased, it means if the load is being increased onto the motor shaft, then your machine may reaches to the full load and you can say on full load, this will be the full load megawatt locus. So, on full load that is 1 per unit, if we increase the active power, then you can say machine will operate at this new condition. I am representing it by the red line. So, excitation EF1 and EF2 magnitude is same. However, I am writing EF2 only in order to represent the second condition. Okay? And if you observe the magnitude is same of the excitation voltage, but the load angle is increases and this will become your new JIA2 axis and this will be your IA2, 90 degree to IA2. So, you can say sir, if this is your IA2 at an angle of phi 2, then this represent that the power factor will be reducing. Is it okay? Similarly, you can say sir, <coughs> if the uh, motor is operating at leading power factor, then what happens to the change in excitation? So, here I am representing some uh, data. Now, please observe here. You can say sir, with the increase in megawatt, load angle is increasing. That you can also observe from the power angle curve. Please observe here. For motor, we have represented the power angle curve in this fashion because delta is negative. So, that will represent that the power is represented in this direction. You can represent upward also and delta on that side also. But since for the motor, we have uh, just taking opposite to the case of generator. So, this will be your EF sin delta curve. Okay. You can say, sir, this is your VEF by Xs. A sine delta curve. Now, in this particular curve, you can found that this delta at delta to be equals to 90, your power will be maximum. Okay, This is the maximum power and this power is VEF by excess only. Now, let us suppose the machine is operating at 0.5 per unit power somewhere here. Okay, The mechanical loading onto the rotor is such that the load angle is presently delta 1. And now, if we increase the mechanical input power, then what happens? If we increase the mechanical input power, then machine will start operating at a new load angle. That is what we can represent as delta 2 at a new output power for P2. So, if the mechanical loading is increases onto the rotor, you can say, sir, load angle is increasing. And that we can also observe here with the same excitation, load angle is increasing. What happens to the stator current? If you observe, the stator current is representing this line. So, you can observe here because Xs is uh, treated as a constant. So, you can say stator current is increasing from this value to a new this value. So, stator current is increasing. What happens to MVAR? You can say, sir, previously the machine is operating at this EF1 cos delta 1. So, V minus EF1 cos delta 1, it means machine is machine is supplying, machine is taking MVAR. So, you can say MVAR import. This is the MVAR import when the load is not changed. But when you are increasing the load, then what happens? Then your MVAR is changed and it is increased. It means now the machine will be taking more MVAR. MVAR import increases to a new value. Is it okay? So you can say, sir, <coughs> if the if the excite if the load is decreased, if we are if we are increasing the load, the effect of increase in load I am writing here, effect of increase in load 
at constant excitation when matter is operating at lagging power factor. So, what happens to load angle delta 1? You can say sir first behavior we can observe onto the load. So, load angle delta increases and what happens to power factor? So, you can say power factor deteriorates towards lagging side. It means power factor is going to be worsed out. So, power factor deteriorates towards lagging side. It means power factor will become more lagging. Okay. It means definitely if the power factor is more lagging, it means MVR import is increasing. So, uh, you can write it the third point as MVAR import increases. Okay. And what happens to stator current? You can say, sir, stator current increases. Is it okay? So, you can say sir with the increase in load angle definitely if the load demand is more then more out more input power is taken by the motor and since the voltage <coughs> given to the motor is same. So, it means with the increase in load definitely the current increases taken by the stator side. Is it okay? So, you can say sir the stator current is increasing. Now, please observe here that is the effect of increase in load with a uh, with constant excitation. If we are keeping the excitation same and increasing the load, then these are the things that is going to be happen. You can also experience here onto the motor. Now, please observe here. Let us suppose this to be the motor and instantaneous position of the rotor I am representing here. Now, please see. This will be the instantaneous position of the rotor as a A dash. 120 degree apart is your BB dash and 120 degree apart is your CC dash. Okay. Now, please see, <coughs> we have this to be the rotor and the present position of the rotor I am representing here. Now, see, this will be the present position of the rotor to be this as a north and this as a south. Let us suppose if the rotor is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction, it means <coughs> the rotor is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction at a speed of ns and magnetic locking has been taken place onto the motor side. Now see, you can say sir a dash, b dash and c dash are shorted and connected to neutral and a, b, c are being supplied by a three phase balanced source. Okay three phase supply at F1 hertz. So, definitely for F1 hertz motor will motor can only operate at one speed. So, you can say this motor can only operate only operate when a stator field and rotor field are stationary with respect to each other. Is it okay? So, motor can operate only when the motor can operate as a motor. You can say this machine can operate as a motor only when the stator field and rotor field are stationary with respect to each other and that corresponds the magnetic locking. Now, let us suppose if we are supplying with the frequency of F1, then because of the current flowing here Ia, Ib and Ic to be 120 degree displaced in time. So, they are going to produce a rotating magnetic field. If we are assuming that rotor is in motion in this direction, then induced DMF polarity, instantaneous induced DMF polarity will be represented by the dot under the conductors and under the influence of north and in the conductors under the influence of south, it carries inward. However, you can say sir because this is a motoring case. So, induced DMF is now appearing as a drop. It means the direction of current and polarity of induced DMF in the conductor is opposite. So, you can say sir the induced DMF can be represented in this way. So, all are induced DMF as a cross and here the, uh, the current flowing is in the terms of dot. So, this black is representing the direction of current. However, the green representation uh, in this uh, conductors are representing the polarity of induced EMF. Now, please see if the currents are flowing in this fashion, then they will create a rotor field. And if you observe by the right hand curl rule, if the direction of current is represented by the thumb, then curl is representing the direction of the field. So, you can say as per the direction of the field, this will be the stator 
north and this will be the stator south. Definitely this north and south is rotating because this is a balanced three phase winding and it is displaced a 120 degree apart in space and is being supplied by the balanced three phase current 120 degree apart in time. So the speed of rotation of this field is found to be 120 into F1 by P and that is what we called synchronous speed. So if this is rotating at NS then definitely this must be rotated at NS then only you can say the stator field and rotor field are stationary with respect to each other. Now please see here I am representing this to be the field okay. So if this is your FF then FAR must be here this will be your FAR. Okay, now presently I am assuming that the machine is operating at unity power factor. So if the machine is operating at unity power factor then you can say sir the resultant MMF will be somewhere here and if this will be the resultant MMF I am explaining this third time so that you can easily get the actual information from this diagram. Now please see this will be the phasor sum of FF and FAR and that you can say sir here it is representing resultant MMF. So you can observe here the resultant MMF, the field MMF lacks the resultant MMF by an angle delta. Now what is the meaning of this resultant MMF? It meaning is that, that this south and this north reaches to a new position because of the armature reaction. So you can say sir, the magnetic line of forces are completing their path in the machine in some this fashion. Now please see. This will be your north and this will be your south and this will be the resultant south and this will be the resultant north. So I am saying resultant north instead of saying a stator north, I am saying resultant north and south. So magnetic line of forces are completing their path in this manner. If I represent the entire magnetic line of forces by only two magnetic line of forces, then it can be represented in this fashion. Now please see. So magnetic line of forces are completing their path in this manner. Is it okay? So uh, the conductors, the stator conductors are linking this flux in this manner. Is it okay? So if there are the stator in conductors, then they are linking the flux in this manner. It, it only represents that. So you can say, sir, this will be the resultant MMF, resultant MMF and this will be your field MMF. The angle between them is representing the load angle delta. Now what happens if we increase the load? At the same power factor if we increase the load then what happens? At the unity power factor if we increase the load then what happens? You can say sir, <coughs> with the increase in load here you can say sir if you observe here the electromagnetic torque is in this direction, the electromagnetic torque is in this direction. So electromagnetic torque and direction of rotation are same and this represent the machine is in motoring mode. Now please observe here. <coughs> Every body wants to be in rest. So this load also wants to be in rest and therefore load applies torque in the opposite direction. If you increase the load then what happens? The rotor position is shift back. Either you can understand in that way that rotor position is shifting back it means load angle is increasing. Or you can also understood in the another way also that is <coughs> <coughs> if I am considering that the rotor is in motion in a clockwise direction, anti-clockwise direction and the position of the rotor will remain same then with the increase in load it will start taking more power from the source side. So you can say this armature currents are increasing and because of the increase in armature current this armature MMF increases to a new value. So this is your FAR new with a new load. So if this is your FAR new then you can experience here that load angle is increasing. So we can ex explain this as in this manner also that it will be increases to delta 3. So thereby you can say the load angle is increasing with the increase in load. That, uh, that, uh, that uh, completely de 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 determine the behavior of the machine. Okay. Now you can say sir in case if it is operating at lagging power factor then what happens at in case of uh, unity power factor it is okay you can see here if the previously machine is operating at unity power factor here and if we increase the megawatt then you can say sir yes the load angle increases and we are keeping the excitation if we are keeping the excitation same uh, we must have to increase the excitation also in case if we are uh, going to uh, represent that we are increasing the megawatt okay. So you can say sir this load angle changes and power factor reaches to this value okay. Now please observe here. 
in case if we represent the lagging power factor then la at lagging power factor what happens you can say sir this north will be reaches to a new position so when this north will be reaches to a new position then the current will be maximum in the conductors and at that time also you will get the same explanation okay so we have found that with the increase in megawatt what happens load angle is increasing power factor is deteriorating towards lagging side if the machine is already uh, working at a lagging power factor and mbar import increases the stator current increases now come to the i have explained this on the basis of unity power factor you can explain also uh, you can understand it also in terms of uh, lagging power factor only the lagging power factor denotes that current flows when the field reaches to this point so accordingly you will get the resultant mmf and you will get the load angle okay so it will be very uh, easier to understand that unity power factor that is why i have represented here unity power factor now please observe if we are talking for a leading power factor the same effect if we have to check for a leading power factor then what happens to the increase in load effect of increase in load at constant excitation when, op when motor is operating at leading power factor so i am taking the second case okay effect of increase in load that is megawatt at constant excitation at constant excitation operating at when motor is operating at when motor is operating at leading power factor now please observe here effect of increase in load at constant excitation when motor is operating at leading power factor now please observe here again i am taking the same concept that if this is your v then 90 degree to the v let us suppose at unity power factor first so we can easily understood what is going to be happen locus of ia and this will be your ia 1 ia and this will be your jia excess so this will be your ef this is for the unity power factor okay now please see this is the locus of megawatt locus of constant megawatt okay let us suppose that this to be 0.75 per unit it means machine is presently working at 0.75 per unit so there will be a possibility that we can increase the load okay so just i have i have to represent that portion only so this is representing the load angle delta now see if the x if the machine is operating at leading power factor say the machine is operating at some 0.8 power factor lead so this will be your angle leading power factor then 90 degree to the ia is your j i a excess and this will be your ef1 okay so this will be minus of j i a1 excess and this will be your ef1 and load angle is delta 1 now if we have to keep the load uh, if we have to keep the uh, excitation same and we are increasing the megawatt then what happens this is representing ef sin delta so you can say sir this portion is representing increasing megawatt so if we increase the megawatt then what happens we have to keep the excitation emf same so that is why i have represented this ef1 and if we increase the megawatt then what happens now please see my board will be smaller so you can understood that we have i am drawing a arc with a radius ef1 okay so with the increase in megawatt what happens you can say with the increase in megawatt let us suppose it will be increases to a new value of this so with the increase in megawatt that is representing say 1 per unit 1 per unit so with the increase in megawatt what happens you can say with the increase in megawatt load angle delta is increasing from delta 1 to a new value delta 2 and the stator current is also increasing that is j i a 2 excess minus of and 90 degree to this is your i a 2 so you can observe here that 
90 degree to this is your IA2. So you can observe here that this will be 90 degree to IA2. So power factor is improving and stator current is increasing. Okay, so this will be your angle phi 2. Previously, the angle is phi 1. So, if the machine is operating at lagging power factor and if we increase the megawatt load, then you can say, sir, load angle increases and, sir, current uh, power factor improves, becomes unity and then deteriorate towards the leading, uh, lagging side. Okay, what happens to MVAR? You can say, sir, this will be representing MVAR. Previously, this is your MVAR, but since EF2, cos delta 2 is more than V. So, you can say, sir, the MVAR is being export. It means Q input is negative. As Q input is proportional to V minus EF cos delta. So, you can say, sir, since EF cos delta is more than V, so this Q input is negative and that is representing MVAR export. It means this machine is exporting the reactive power presently. So, for the reactive power, it is acting as a capacitor. And if you consider the active and reactive both, it is working as a RC network if we go with the electrical equivalent model. Okay. Now, please see. With the increase in load, you can say, sir, MVR export decreases. So, you can say, sir, MVR export is decreasing. MVR export is decreasing and then MVR export will become zero at unity power factor and then MVR import. Okay. So, <coughs> the effect of increase in load at constant excitation when motor is operating at leading power factor. So, when motor is operating at leading power factor, effect of increase in megawatt at constant excitation when motor is operating at leading power factor. So, you can say, sir, first thing that happens is load angle delta, you can say, sir, load angle delta increases. Okay. So, whenever load increases, it means load angle is increasing. And second one, what happens to power factor? Power factor improves becomes unity and then deteriorates towards lagging side MVAR. So, sir, MVAR export decreases becomes 0 at unity power factor and then MVAR import. Okay. So, we can observe here with the change in load, the reactive power is also changing if we are not changing the excitation. However, if we change the excitation, then only reactive power is affected. There will be no change in the active power. So, that keep that in mind. Okay. Now, you can also say, sir, what happens to stator current? So, fourth point is stator current is, you can say, sir, previously this will be the stator current. So, if we are increasing the megawatt, stator current increases. And in case if we decrease the megawatt, stator current decreases. So, you can say, stator current totally depends upon the load. If the load is increasing, stator current is increasing. If the load is decreasing, stator current is decreasing. So, stator current, in this case, stator current increases. Okay. In increase and decrease I have represented by the arrow and it is sufficient for you. Okay. No, so this, this is the change. This is the effect of change in load at constant mega watt. Okay. Next, we will discuss some numericals so that it will be very helpful to you. Okay.